Hello everyone, Firemech here, and let's continue the Satch route, which is finally getting a little more intimate with Satch. Finally. <clears throat> just, I just like checking to make sure I'm recording. Alright, let's go. I returned to my room that evening, awash in a happy peacefulness I hadn't felt in years. For the first time, I felt like I belonged somewhere, with people I could trust. For the first time, I had a sense of freedom. From here, I could be anything I wanted to be. I just had to discover my dream. How to do that? I pushed open the door, expecting to find Maya waiting to pour questions down my throat, but to my surprise, the room was empty. A book sat open on her desk, some pencils some pencils next to it. She must have gone to the bathroom or something. I glanced over the book on her desk, unable to hide my curiosity about what she was doing. <laughs> my heart stopped. This book. I lifted one of the covers to peer at the spine. A history of seduction. Oh ho! Ha ha ha, she's looking for ways to get pro Jared. This is one of the books that went missing at the library. <laughs> and what was my doing with it? That didn't make any sense. Someone must have brought it over and left it there. There was no one in my wood. Anna. You're back! <laughs> I jumped nearly a foot in the air into the air, suddenly eye to eye with my. Then I crossed to my backpack and opened it, packing my notes away as if nothing happened. Hey, what's up? Hey, you okay? Mm-hmm. I nodded my face on fire. Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye, ta eye contact. <laughs> Hot damn, did you and Satch make out or something? My, of course not. We just studied well. Really? Is that all? She gave me the stink eye and I began to alphabetize my notes. Yep, totally. Aw, oh, man. What's the point of living through... <clears throat> What's the point of living through if you're not going to give me all the juicy details? Huh. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, but I can't give details that don't exist. She crossed her arms grumpily. <laughs> if you say so. As she turned away, her eyes fell across the book on her desk. She started, but smoothly crossed over to it, closed it, and put it in her desk drawer. Well, if you're not going to reveal your secrets, I'm going to bed. She sniffed ha haughtily. I should get ready too. I'll shower first. Oh man! I quickly grabbed my shower things in a towel, put on some flip flops, and was out of the door. Only then was I able to breathe normally. I should hurry, or Mai will even get more suspicious. It didn't take long that night for Mai to fall asleep. As her snores filled the air, I quietly tiptoed out of bed and headed to her desk. She, she slept on the top bunk facing outwards. If I made any noise, she'd definitely wake up and see me going through her stuff. This was a huge bre breach of her privacy, but then didn't, did she really deserve to keep her privacy if she was stealing library books and putting Satch in danger? I hurried over her desk. Suddenly, I couldn't remember which drawer she put that book in. The obvious choice was the locked drawer, but if someone locked it, then... When I would try to open it, she'd probably hear it. Where should I look? Ruffle through the regular drawers, poke through her backpack, try to lock door. Drawer. I'm not gonna do the drawer. I could poke through her backpack, or I could ruffle through the regular drawers. Ooh. Hmm. The backpack seems like a very off choice. I'm gonna do the backpack. I went. I bent to the side of her desk and unzipped her backpack. It was it was possible that after I left to go to shower, she shoved the book in there, fully intending to take it back to the library the next day. If that was true, then there was nothing to worry about. Mai was definitely still a trustworthy person. I shoved through the papers in her backpack. Even in the dim moonlight, I could make out clippings of Jared modeling various styles of sim suits. And if I thought he was pretty in real life, these were almost unbearable. <laughs> in the back of her pack was a thick pile of papers bound by a hard cover. I pulled it out and examined it. It wasn't the book I was looking for, or a library book for that matter. In fact, it looked like a handmade book. Was my writing something? <laughs> my gave a loud snore and I jumped, nearly dropping what I was holding. Heart pounding, I quickly returned it to its proper place, set things back to about what I thought they were before I started messing around and slowly crawled into bed. It didn't matter what that she hadn't actually woken up, at least as far as I could tell. 
My heart pounded as though she came after me with a knife. It took me forever to fall asleep. The guilt I felt for snooping through my things made a terrible bedfellow. And that morning, I got up nearly an hour before I usually did. I hardly got any sleep that night, so there was no point in laying in bed staring at the ceiling. What was what? Ha! <laughs> that was what I told myself as quickly as I dressed, grabbed my bag, and ran outside. I told myself that, but I knew deep down it was a lie. I didn't want to talk to Mai. I didn't even want to look at her. I didn't know what I, that I could not without giving something away. I didn't know which was worse, that I broke her t trust, or that now I knew she was probably guilty. With a stack of books in her locker and the one on her, the one on her desk, what other conclusion was I supposed to come to? How could she do this to Satch after all he did for us? I walked around campus, kicking the early morning dew out of the grass. More importantly, what was I going to do about it? Should I tell Satch? Should I talk to Mai? Was even any of my business anymore? Mai had kleptomania, an illness. I didn't know what really meant, what that really meant, or what she was struggling with. I could easily just decide she was a bad person, that she cared more about herself than about the fact that she was hurting Satch. But Mai had shown me over the past two months who she was as a person. I knew better than to assume she was doing this out of spite. I should give her the benefit of the doubt. At the very least, she deserved that from me. Good morning. Hana! What's going on? What are you doing here so early? Uh, I, I, uh... uh I need to go buy knitting needles, bye! I sprinted in the opposite direction, paying no heed where I was going. Hana. Hana, wait. Satch's voice faded into the distance as I ran and ran and ran. By the time I stopped and reached the field, I collapsed to the ground. I hate exercise. I glanced up in the sky. The sun was peeking over the tops of the trees in the distance. There was no way I was getting to class on time, not after running all the way here. Sighing, I made my way back to school. There goes Hana Mizuno, smooth operator. That's why Mishizuka paused as I bedraggled stepped into the classroom. I hesitated in the doorway, waiting to be interrogated, but to my surprise, she just gave me a sad kind of smile and nodded in my seat. I quickly sat, marveling at the ease at which I escaped burning at the stake. Something was definitely up with Miss Chizuka, but what? Thankfully, considering class was already in session, I only narrowly avoided trouble. Mai didn't question me about my whereabouts. I was able to finish class without locking my eyes with her a single time. At lunch, I headed straight to the library and began pulling out books. I wanted facts, straight up facts, about what kleptomania was and how it affected people. Internet access was severely restricted at Asagao, as if we had all if we all had parents who thought the internet was filled with pedophiles, catfishers, and porn, so books were my only means of figuring things out. As I sifted through the thick books on the table, a sick feeling hit my stomach. Impulse control disorder, often accompanying the depression or obsessive compulsive disorder, a way of managing emotional stress or anxiety. Sufferers often do not wish to steal and will steal the same types of items repeatedly, often items of little value to the owner such as pens, paper clips, erasers. Sufferers should learn their triggers and how to avoid the stress and anxiety that provokes these impulses. Feel intense guilt and shame are often unable to tell friends or family. Can have large periods of regression without theft. May give away stolen items to charity, friends, or family, or even return the items to their original place. Don't often use what they steal, as the thefts are not driven by necessity but at an emotional high. Feel as if they can't control their behavior, often having maintaining intimate relationships out of fear or shame. It didn't seem to be in this order with, with much concrete information on it, as those with it often didn't tell their doctors they had it. As such, at least the books I was reading, there was hardly anything about how to approach a loved one suffering from such a disorder. One thing stood out to me, though. Mai didn't necessarily want to be stealing things. She felt guilty. She felt ashamed. And thinking back to when she told me about her kleptomania, she was terrified, absolutely terrified that I wouldn't, couldn't, wouldn't accept her, that I would no longer want to be her friend, and that, would, that I would vilify her. That's another word I'm not used to hearing. Yes, Satch was in trouble because of what Mai was doing, but that didn't make Mai a bad person. This was where this was her fault. This was her responsibility. But, but, but someone could do bad things to still be a good person. 
And my? Uh... Feng Shui. Say Feng Shui. <gasps> you call yourself friends? Is this really the my route? <laughs> It's the Satch's route has been very interesting so far. I've... It is interesting. Now I'll just say this: I can't believe you, any of you. I thought you were better than this. You're my best friend, Hana. I just want you to think this through. I don't like seeing people take advantage of my friends, people I care about. <sighs> well, it's okay. We're all cowards sometimes. Maya was not a bad person. I returned to class without having eaten and found a seaweed-wrapped rice ball waiting for me. As I sat down and looked around for who to put it in, who put it in there, Maya grinned at me. Knowing what I did about her, what I did about her, how I was going to confront her, I didn't want to make her feel bad, but what if she was doing what but what she was doing wasn't right? Could I just go up to her and accuse her or Miss Yusuka came into the room, practically floating off her feet. <laughs> Class, sometimes miracles do happen. Sometimes you find what you want exactly in the place you least expected. At the same time, you finally decide to stop looking. At the same time, you finally decide to stop looking. Okay. Looks are important, but personality. Personality is what gives humans life, depth, and meaning. Learn from my example. Please take 10 minutes to doodle and color in your notebooks. I'll be doing the same. Mai leaned over to me. She's definitely getting laid. <gasps> Mai! <laughs> no, no, she's right. Let her be. Ha! <laughs> wow. She actually heard that. I opened my notebook and instead of doodling, started scrawling out different potential combos for Dumba Doom's revenge. There was only a week and some change until the tournament next Saturday. I spent so much time worrying about Satch and the books that I hardly practiced at all. Now that I knew who did it, it was time to catch up. I spent half the time wondering what to do about my and half strategizing. Before I knew it, the bell rang. Miss Chizuka stood and closed her notebook, which was covered in red and pink hard, hards, pink hards, hard stick figures holding hands and hugging. And Mrs. Shizuka's something. What? I didn't follow that sentence very well. Tata, my lovelies! She skipped out of the room, happy as a bunny with a carrot. <laughs> well, it's good that she's happy. Yeah, where were you this morning at lunch? <laughs> and, at, and at lunch. Meeting up with Satch again? No, of course not. We gathered our things and left the room. As we walked, my chest tensed. Mai was hypothesizing about Chizuka's newest relationship and wondering whether things would end badly again or whether she found a toad who finally treated her well. I glanced around as we walked, hoping to avoid... Hana. Hey, Hana! Alright, I gotta drink this. I jumped, sat somewhere behind us, waved a hand in the air, and called out my name. I grabbed Maya's hand and walked faster, skipping out on, out onto the campus. Uh, uh Hana, aren't you going to talk to Satch? No. So, something's wrong? I'd rather not talk about it here. Maya grew quiet. Her wrist fell limp in my hand. I led her into Primrose House and to our dorm. She watched me unlock the door, then stepped right through as if on death row. I closed the door behind us and opened my mouth. <laughs> I know. I know, I know, I know. I don't know why I did it, and I'm sorry! I couldn't help it. And after I knew Satch was in trouble, I, I couldn't make myself give them back. I didn't want people to know I was the one who took them. I didn't want to think about what was going to... What that... Bleh. And that I was going to do with them into us, so I've been just sitting here and taking more. The more stress I got, the more I took, and, and... My... I pulled her into a hug, running my hand down her hair. I know you didn't mean to do it. It's okay. Please don't feel like you're a bad person. You're not. You're my Sasaki. You're my best friend. I know that you're a good person, I'll stick by you no matter what. 
Maya wrapped her arms around me, sobbing to my shoulder. I thought you'd hate me! <gasps> hate you? How could I ever hate you? You're the most important person here to me. You always will be. No matter what. Oh, no. But my... I know, I know. I need to tell him. I need to give the books back. Will you go with me? I'm afraid to go alone. Of course I will. She sniffed and gave me wa a watery smile. Thanks, Anna. Want to clean up before we go? Definitely. Doll. I waited for Maya outside the girls' restroom, listening to her pump herself up and wash her face. I said Satch would take it well. And part of me believed that, but part of me was still apprehensive. Maybe it was a bit much to expect Satch to take this in stride. But he definitely, definitely wouldn't let this color his suspicion of us at the boots, as the boots thieves. Definitely. I'm ready. It wasn't until we got outside of the library that Mai showed signs of wavering. She glanced at me and I nodded. There was nowhere for her to escape. Either she dealt with the problem and got, and he got mad at her, or I did. She grit her teeth and gingerly pushed open the library door. She stepped through and I followed. To our surprise, Satch wasn't standing at the front desk. Nobody was. Is he off duty? Hmm. Let's walk around to make sure. Together we walked through the library, our fearful, bleh, fearful faces drawing eyes from the many students hovering over their homework. They chose the library instead of the club room because they believed the requirement of, a, of quiet would help them actually get their statues down and in place. We reached the back corner of the library and passed a student asleep on a chair, drool dribbling down his chin, then we found them. The whole of normal boots gathered around a long table, talking quietly but furiously. Blah. <laughs> Blah. But that's the same strategy as last year. Mm, now be prepared for it. Hmm. I don't know why I gave him that voice. Exactly. Why it's good to use it again, but with a twist. Uh... I can't believe you didn't sign up for trivia this year. I get it. That doesn't make any doesn't make it any easier on us. I'd like to branch out. It sounded like they were having a tournament strategy meeting. Without me. My glance at me and I tried not to show it, but I was hurt. Of course they wouldn't want me around, just because they were treating me like a friend again didn't mean they had to trust me as far as the tournament was concerned. Anyway, Satch is over there. We emerged from the shadows, skittish like kittens. As soon as Jared saw us approaching, he stopped talking. Um. Could we speak with Satch, please? Privately? All eyes in the room landed on Satch. Sure, continue without me, guys. He stood, and we walked over to the other corner of the library. Satch crossed his arms, waiting. Sorry. I'm sorry. Mai bowed deeply, hands at her sides. Although a touching gesture, I noticed it almost it also hit her face from view. I I'm the one who took the books from the library. I have kleptomania. I couldn't control it. When I found out how much you were suffering, I only felt worse. I thought Hana would be framed for the boots and I lost all nerve. I'm sorry. She lifted her head to my surprise, Satch smiled. It's okay. What? That's it? Satch sighed and scratched the back of his neck. Yeah, well, turns out I was fired yesterday, so it doesn't affect me anymore. Satch? No, it's better this way. It wasn't good to work here. It's a terrible environment, so in a way, it's a blessing. Is this that all you had to say? Uh... I, I guess so. Mai looked as if she were in shock. Be good. Cool! If I get... I've got to get back to the meeting then. We followed Satch out from around the bookshelf, and then somebody blocked our way. Hmm. I knew it. The color drained from Mai's face. I know you couldn't be trusted. Pink-haired girls are all the same. So it comes as no surprise that the redheads would be similar. Shane. Without another word, he turned on his heel. Uh. Oh no. We rushed back to normal boots table, but... By the time we got there... Fault. He needs that money to go to school. She let him take the fall for it. Mai slid behind me, pressing her face into my shoulder. How could she do that to him? Could we really trust these girls? 
but but Mai would never. Do you really think after all this they wouldn't have taken the boots? Uh. That's ridiculous. Why would we take the boots? What could even what could we even do with them? Hmm. They were made of gold. Use your head. But but that's not fair. I trailed off, looking around the room. No one seemed to want to make eye contact with me. Not even Satch. I knew Mai wouldn't do such a thing. She even told me so, but... But she said the same thing about the books. I felt her trembling behind me, suddenly grew full of doubt. But she didn't want to talk about the books because she was afraid of what would happen. What would she ever tell... Why would she ever tell me she took the boots? And it wasn't her... And if it wasn't her, who... She let Satch take the fall for the books, and it seemed like, and it seemed like in this case I could don't go down with her. Or, of course, I'm gonna defend my. I'm never gonna. S Why would I side with the guys? That'd be an awful thing to do. Look, I I'm on my side, no matter what. If that means you all expect me, then then that's just what it means. We don't have time for this. I grabbed Mai's hand and pulled her with me, away from the table, away from Satch, away from the normal boots club. When we got out of the library, Mai pulled me into a hug. Oh, no. Thank you. I hugged her back, fighting tears. This was fine. This was definitely fine. Mm. All over some silly books. But they were important books. Did you even read them? Well... I, I took them for a reason. There was something I was working on. Working on what? She eyed me up and down. If I tell you, promise you won't abandon me? Is that still something you're asking at this point? Good point. Come on. My duck through her drawer on her, in our room, then pulled out a shiny silver key. With it, she opened the locked drawer on the bottom of her desk and pulled out a stack of papers. What is this? This, eyes shining, she piled the papers into my hands, is my masterpiece. I read the title, Normal Love, an erotic friend fiction. Friend fiction? Friendship, trauma, angst, comfort, thick, lemon. Friend fiction? Erotic friend fiction? We're going to Bob's Burgers territory? Erotic friend fiction? Nice. My eyes widen. I scan the paper quickly. Seeing giant yaoi hands and references to London in the 1800s. <gasps> I, I, I... Shh. Just read it, Hana. Tell me what you think. I never did finish reading Mai's friend fiction. The last thing I remembered quite a ways through the story was Shane and John starting to... Over a... No. Perhaps it was better left unsaid. Yes, it was definitely better left unsaid. I expected Maya to at least somewhat return to her normal, cheerful self, but by the next day, guilt was still clearly gnawing at her conscience. We sat at our respective desk, Maya tapping away with her pencil. Uh. I feel awful. I can't believe he lost his job because of us. Because of me. Maya, it's not your fault. Those words died on my lips. It was at least partially her fault. She had a direct hand in it. I could tell her it wasn't true until the cows came home, but it was true. Partially, but Mai wouldn't let that bit of responsibility go. Well... Isn't there something we can do? Hmm. I'm going to confess. I'll take the books to the library and tell her I'm the one who took them. Satch had no idea, and none of it was his fault. He needs his job back. Do you think that'll work? Won't you get in trouble? Probably, but it's not as if I don't deserve it. I took the books, after all. That was my doing. She began panicking. Not not panicking. She began packing books into her satchel, and when she was straightened, I stood too. I'm going with you. Thanks, Hana, for everything. When we got to the library, we went straight to the front desk. Mimi was manning it. Manning it? Oh, Manning it. Okay, it makes more sense than that. Sorry. Looking bored out of her mind. Yes, what do you... Hey, you're not allowed back here. We went straight past her into the door to the back room. Sorry, but this is important. We've got direct business with the librarian. 
She eyed us wearily, then shrugged. Suit yourselves. I wouldn't want to be you. My knocked on the door, jaw clenched tighter than a corkscrew. What? What is it? I need to speak with you. It's urgent. There was a loud series of grumbles from beyond the door, and then it opened. I'll give you five seconds. My hastily slipped, slipped the books out of her bag. Do, do you see these? These are the books that were missing from the library. I took them! Alright, and? Um. And I'm turning them in. I'm responsible for stealing them. I should be punished. And then you can give Satch's job back, because he, wa he wasn't at fault. She held the books out to the librarian and bowed, tears in her eyes. Under no circumstances! She lifted the book out of my outstretched arms. Mimi! Yes? Mimi sprinted over, abject terror in her eyes. I want these put away within five minutes. Do you understand? Y yes, sir. She dashed off. I can't believe this. But th that's not fair. No. Mm -hmm. Sash deserves, deserves his job back. Regardless of who took the books, she looked at Mai as though she would spit on her. Sash did not find them. That is that. But, but you... You are the two girls who've been hanging out with a bunch of recently, hmm? Perhaps you would like to have detention over tournament weekend? My jaw dropped. And maybe I can add a helping for Satchel as well. <coughs> no, no, that's... Then do not let me see you again. You know what will happen if you do. She slammed the door in our faces. Damn, what a bitch. Ma Mai and I walked back in silence. How could there be someone like that in charge of students in school? Uh, in the school? Can you believe her? <sighs> Maybe it's better he doesn't have that job. Inwardly, I agree. No one should have put up with that kind of treatment. Not even Mimi. But without that job, how was Satch going to pay for school? We weren't allowed to seek work outside of school unless he found another job here on campus. Tomorrow was Saturday. Only one week until the tournament. The next day, I went straight to Satch's room. I wasn't sure what exactly I was going to do, but I couldn't stop worrying about him. I wanted to apologize or explain myself or something. I wanted to do something. I couldn't stand sitting around thinking about it. I knocked on the door. From inside, I heard a small crash. Did you just a second? There was a bit more crashing and Satch muttering under his breath. Then the door flew open. Hana. Come in, come in! He was trembling with excitement, absolutely beaming smudges of oil on his... In his cheeks. Uh, are you okay? Yeah. Yes, come in. He grabbed my wrist and pulled me into his room, shutting the door tight behind me. Um. I wanted to apologize. Ma and I went to return the books to the library yesterday, and we tried to get your job back, but Satch waved his hand. I don't care about that, honestly. I thought about it, and losing this job might be the best possible thing that could happen to me. I wasted so much time there, and the treatment I received from the librarian was really getting me down. I didn't realize until I was away from the constant ne negativity. I have so much energy now, and look! He gestured dramatically to his VR machine, which was sitting out in the middle of the room. I made a major breakthrough! He was practically bouncing as I crept towards it. It looked exactly the same to me. Um, good? Here, put it on, you'll see. He handed me the helmet, and I shut it on my head. It's com comfier than before. Yeah. And really, some people's heads might be more sensitive than others, so I found some padding that didn't disrupt the connectors. I'm turning it on, okay? Okay. Satch's dorm room faded away, and the familiar feeling of dizziness came over me. Then I found myself in that familiar white room, this time instead of objects on a table. However, there were two doors. Okay, so you don't move your body. I'm putting my hand on you just to make sure you don't bump into anything. But think about moving across a room. Think about it? I twitched. No, don't move. Think about moving. Um. How do I... I kept my arms pinned to my sides and I glanced around the room. Think about moving? I want to move over there. Nothing happened. Okay, I want to... Uh, My arm goes up. <laughs> no. I let out a frustrated sigh. I could see myself moving in my mind's eye, but it wasn't... I moved! Or the room around me was moving? The doors were getting closer to me, as if I took a step forward, and then another, and then another. I reached to the left door and 
thought about reaching out my hand just as it seemed I would grasp the doorknob. I felt myself back in the, in the dorm room. Satch's arm around my soldiers. Shoal shoulders. I popped off the VR helmet. Confused as with whether it, that was a success or a failure. The tournament required a finished project. One without many gl glitches. Would this be really okay? Would this really be okay? But when I looked at Satch, he was beaming. Yes. Isn't it amazing? It's, to it's a total breakthrough. I stared at him and then it hit me. <laughs> Oh my god, it is! I grab his arm and jump up and down. I move just by thinking. Sitch. Do you realize what you've made? He grabbed my arm and started jumping too. <laughs> I do, I do. This is great. Isn't it great? I didn't think I'd be able to do it. I think with this, I have a real chance of making my dream come true. I can sell this. Hana, this could be my source of income. And I have all the time in the world to study and create. I really think this can work. He hugged me, then instantly released me, a blush on his cheeks. Thanks for helping me and being my guinea pig. The helmet's too small for, for Jared's hair. His gorgeous flowing locks. That made sense. As long as I can get this working before the tournament, anything else will work itself out. I trust it'll work out as long as I do my part. <laughs> In that case, I'll get out of your way. Right on. Thanks, Hana. I'll talk to you later. I waved and left him alone with his machine. As soon as I shut the door, the whirring of a machine kicked in. He was back at it. I was glad. It was unfortunate that it happened, but maybe it really was the best possible thing. Sometimes things happen for a reason, right? After having a good luck come to Asagao, meet Mai, and somehow end up with the chance to join the Normal Boots Club, I firmly believed that. Never had I seen Satch so happy. It made me happy. I felt inspired, too. There was still a week before the tournament, and I hadn't practiced much. It was time to fix that. And before we continue this scene, we're going to end the episode, guys. And we're going to continue this next time. We should... Hopefully the next one should be the finale for Satch's route. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how close I am exactly, but... <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to be the finale. But This is Farmex saying bye-bye. See you next time.